Yes. Now let's head out to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens where Jim Barry is live at the Dolphins training facility. And Jim, I heard you're with a Hall of Famer. We see him there. Great to see Jason Taylor with you this afternoon. Absolutely. Boy, you guys really covered it all. And you're right. These are exciting times for us and exciting times for the Miami Dolphins. And with all the big offseason changes, I can tell you the optimism here is absolutely through the roof. New coach, new players, new attitude, new philosophy, new everything. But yes, Jason Taylor, who I think is the most exciting defensive player in Dolphin history, is going to be back in the booth with us. And certainly we are thrilled that he is going to be part of the team once again. And JT, with a new head coach, I think the preseason takes on a more important tone, doesn't it? It does. I think, you know, you're trying to instill a new culture and a new philosophy, obviously new schemes offensively and defensively. So you still won't see some of the veteran guys really go long in the preseason. You know, you might get some guys inactive for the first game, but with it only being three games now and them shortening it up a little bit, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how, how McDaniels does the, the strategy of getting guys ready, learning a new system, mm -hmm. but obviously – you know, as we get older, we don't want to do a whole lot in August. <laughs> That's right. So and you brought up Mike McDaniel, the new head coach, and there's two things that people tell me time and again about him. A, so smart. B, so relatable. What's your early impression of him? Well, I love that he's himself. He's not trying to be somebody else. And people say, well, he's so different. His philosophy, his approach, the way he handles himself is so different than what you see the NFL coach do. And, mm -hmm. But that's what players love. They love that authenticity, a genuine guy that's just willing to be himself. He can be self-deprecating. He can laugh at himself. He doesn't take himself too seriously. But they all know and respect that he is he's the boss. He's the head, he's the head football coach. A very, very smart guy. Um, really a, a cool guy to be around. I've only been around him a couple times. But yeah. I've enjoyed it. And, and I know talking to the players, they have really enjoyed the, I don't want to say breath of fresh air because, of, you know, the, the previous coach was, was a good guy in a lot of ways, too. But it's just different. Right. And maybe this team needs different. And now, you know, it's it's you know everybody everyone's all in. It's 10 toes down and trying to get ready for the season. Let's see what happens. Well, of course, I don't care who the coach is. You can't win unless you got talent. And boy, the Dolphins in the offseason certainly went out to get it. They got mm -hmm. the cheetah, Tyreek Hill. And boy, he and Tua have become best buddies just like that. Tua was just on his podcast. What do you make of this instant bond between those well, two? Well, they need to have that bond. I mean, obviously, uh, Waddle's a great player, had an amazing season last year, and he's going to be even better this year, I think. And mm -hmm. Tua needs to find that guy, you know, outside of Waddle. And it's obviously they brought in the Cheetah for, for a reason. He's one of the most dynamic and electrifying receivers in the NFL. Paid a lot of money to get him here. They're going to use him in a lot of different ways. I know Coach McDaniels is, is probably chopping the bit to get him in the scheme and the designs and do all these different things with him. And your quarterback needs to find his best receiver, or 1A and 1B, him, he and Waddle, yeah. and take him to dinner, do everything you need to do. If you need to buy him a car, need to buy him a house. Wow. Actually, I guess Cheetah's buying everybody else everything. Thank he's you. Got he's got all got the money big in deal. Miami. You're right. But <laughs> they have to be best friends. And, that, and I think it's, it's great that they're developing that rapport in the offseason. And again, Tua, for all the things said about Tua, he's still young in this. He's still going through a full his second full off season and yeah. getting indoctrinated into being an NFL quarterback and, and I think the sky's the limit. And one thing they did not change much is that defense which was really good last year. Can it be even better this season? It, it can. Hopefully it come out of the gate a little faster. You know, they, they kept Coach Boyer here and, and they had the same defensive system some really, really good football players as we know. You know, Xavier Howard, a guy I'm very high on. Two rookies that I was very high on last year, obviously Jalen Phillips mm -hmm. and Javon Holland I think is going to be an all-pro. Both of those guys could be all-pro players. There's a lot of talent defensively. I love the way they play. It's a lot of risk, a lot of reward, but the, the way they do it and, and how sound they are and coming out of that all-up show right. and playing zero coverage and Listen, when you play zero, you better get to the quarterback. Right. Or they're going to be striking up the band or, or light up the scoreboard. <laughs> and they did a really good job, especially yeah. the last, second half of the season, of shutting guys down. They are a team. And speaking of teams, you and Steve Goldstein were an excellent team last year. It seemed like you guys have been working together for years. Talk about the vibe you had with him. Uh, it was great. I mean, working with Goldie. And, and I told him all the time, you know, he does play-by-play -play for hockey. If you could do that, you could do anything in the world. Amen I mean, the that. names are so difficult. <laughs> I struggle to say a Javon Holland or Jalen Phillips. And he, he gets all these hockey names. So he is a consummate pro really good at what he does and Listen, man, the baldness. It's the bald brothers. We just we just vibe like that. Yeah, I tell guess. you what, you know, you guys got that nice shine going, and it really works. It, it's, <laughs> I don't buff it. it just, the hair doesn't grow there. It is what it is. <laughs> I hear you. Well, listen, we have a little gift for you real quick. TD, come on in and give uh, Jason uh, a gift. This oh, is a look new at that. I'm, I'm changing Ford my number. Dolphin. Isn't this Javon Holland's number? Well, it is, but that's okay. This is for you, Jason. But I, I know why you did this. He, outdre he, over, he overdressed, and, I, and I'm in shorts, so he, he gave me this so I can cover myself up. Somebody has to be the executive here. There, there we okay. go. All right. <laughs> hey, man. Appreciate it. Always good to see you, and uh, thanks for being part of the team. Uh, we're live here at Dolphin Training Camp. Along with Jason Taylor, I'm Jim Barry. Let's go back to you.
Both of you guys look great, and we cannot wait for the season to uh, begin, can we, Lauren? It's going to be so much fun. Jason, I like the number 99, but four looks good on you, too. Thanks so much for being <laughs> with us. Thank you so much. The Miami <laughs> Dolphins kick off the regular season right here on CBS 4 on Sunday, September 11th at, 4 p at 1 p.m. as they open the season against their AFC East rivals, the New England Patriots. Also, don't miss the Miami Dolphins podcast, The Fish Tank, Saturday nights at 7.30 on CBS4, hosted by Seth Levitt and former Dolphins wide receiver O.J. McDuffie as they go in-depth for interviews and much more each and every week. CBS4 is also the home of the Natmore Trophy that honors the top high school football player in South Florida.